Are you ready for a nervous season finale? Last year, the season finale saw us move from a playoff spot up in the league into an automatic promotion spot by the last match day to get us to the championship. In the championship in this first season, it's not gone as well as we'd hoped that it would do. And we find ourselves hoping to also move up a position or two in the league in this season finale. This time to stay in the division that we're in. Three points the gap to Birmingham. Ten goals, crucially, with the goal difference the gap to Birmingham. Huddersfield are right there in front of us as well. And it's really two of the three of us that are going to get relegated this season. We just pray that we're not one of them. Birmingham City have West Bromwich Albion at home, which is a local-ish derby, a Birmingham West Midlands derby. Obviously, Birmingham care more about Villa and West Brom care more about Wolves, but there is certainly some rivalry there. Birmingham also have... Where are you, Birmingham? Where are you, Birmingham? Why can't I find you? They also got Bristol City at home. And then on the final day... Where are you, Birmingham? Why can't I see you? They've got Norwich away. Birmingham have some difficult fixtures. Huddersfield have Cardiff away on the final day, which is a difficult fixture. The match day before that, they've got Swansea at home, which is not an easy game either. And on this first match day, Huddersfield face Luton at home. Another difficult fixture. We have Watford away. Not an easy fixture. Plymouth away. Not an easy fixture, but a side that are nearer to us. And Hull at home on the final day. Other teams have harder games, but we have more of a deficit to try and overturn. Our season hangs in the balance. Next season, we will obviously take a financial hit. If we get relegated, we will have our um, transfer budget go down. Of course, if we get relegated, we lose 15% of our current tra uh, wage budget, which at the minute stands at originally 969 thousand pounds meaning as it stands in the relegation zone our wage budget next season will be eighty two and a half thousand we're currently spending with obviously sizable low knees 127 so we are going to have to try our absolute best to stay in the division this year to protect financially for next season although of course we do have sales we can make if we need to adjust things accordingly in a realistic fashion with regards how you manage your playing staff we hope to still be in the championship next year, though. Today, we are saying thank you to those of you on the board behind me, to Davidenki, to Mr. Poosh, and to Jamie for your continued support on streaming in the comment section on YouTube. I asked you yesterday for your a season awards winners, so do check yesterday's episode to leave your feedback for that. That video will probably come to you tomorrow alongside episode one of season four. Question is... Where will we be in Season 4? Will we be a championship side or will we be back in League 1? We shall find out one game at a time. Watford first. Ugh. Vicarage Road is not an easy place to go. The pre-match uh, report shows them having not won in their last five games, but they are a very capable side. Three and a half stars, mid-70s across the board. Daniel Backman still in goal for them. It is going to... They've got Aston Vranchkin midfield, for Christ's sake. Wesley Hoot at the back, as well as Ryan Porteous. Oh, God. This is going to be really, really, really tough. Ferreira. Oh, I read that. Tried to turn quickly enough. and couldn't do so. Here is Aspria. Give me Charlie Good. Good save. I'm just trying to block the shot. Just trying to block the shot. It's going to be a penalty to Watford here. Just steps across to try and block it. And the guy runs into me as he's following through with his shot. Referee points the spot. Hurtado steps up and... Saved by Jack Stevens. Huge moment in the game. Huge moment in the fight against relegation. That's massive. Loose by Porteous. One back by Balagizi. James Bellagisi is about to come off the field of play. And Daniel Backman makes a great save to deny us an opening goal in the game. Just as important a stop as the penalty save earlier on. That one, absolutely huge. Thought about squaring it, thought better of it. Because there was a defender in the way. But that's the sort of moment that you need to go for you, not against you. Brown with a nice spin. 
Yengi through a gap maybe. Here comes Brown again. Needs the supporting run. Has it. Come on, lads, please. Oh, just so lackadaisical in moving towards the ball. And possession given away. Well, in again. A nil-nil's not great for us, but it's obviously better than a defeat. Try and play Cusini in behind, and that took a deflection off a hand. It will be a free kick. 25 to go. Change is being made. What can we do? I will play this short. That's not exactly where that was supposed to go. Never mind. Brown spins. Brown in the box. Brown in the box. Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Sorensen. Osborne. Dodds under control eventually. All the way out wide. McKenzie. Can he deliver a ball looking for the man in the middle? He can. It's blocked. It'll be a free kick for another handball. West Brom. West Brom. Watford. Throwing their arms about everywhere. Can Ben Osborne find the ball to a man at the back post? That can give us the goal we crave. Daniel Backman comes to get it. 20 to go. Still hanging on here. Oh, he's literally in the process of kicking the football. Luton 2, Huddersfield Town nil is a great result. It's just popped up above me. But it's only a great result if we avoid defeat here too. Yengi's going to have to just run into the space here. And Cusini Yengi is on his way. Kusini Yengi needs to score this if we're to stand a chance of staying in the division. And Kusini Yengi has buried the ball on the breakaway. Cambridge United 1, Watford 0 with 11 minutes to go. Time to shut up shop, lads. Let's be honest. Nine points today. Surely see us survive. Middlesbrough 2, Charlton 1. Charlton are already down, though. Last we saw Huddersfield were losing by two goals to nil. I know nothing of Birmingham City's result thus far. Two minutes added on. We're just holding on to it. That's all we can do and hope to do. Oh, he was switching it. He was in the process of switching it. Please don't. Just please don't. Well in, Rafferty. That'll be game. Holding our breath here. Cambridge 1, Watford 0. Part 1 of the trilogy. Part 1 of 3. Complete. Cambridge 1, Watford 0 away from home. It's a narrow margin of victory. It's a slim one, but winning nonetheless is all that's going to save us. Birmingham 0, West Brom 3. Giant results at St Andrews for us. Just a couple of questions, Clarkson's please. unhappy, but the team has to come first. And right now, he's not the man. Every player did their job today. I think this puts us level on points with Birmingham City. And Thanks very much. Three points clear of Huddersfield Town, but we'll see us still in the relegation zone on goal difference. We have a press conference question to come to you first here from Isaac. It says, due to how questionable some of the team's defending has been lately, do you think it's best to go old school and blast the ball out instead of playing out from the back? I find it difficult to play out, to uh, blast, blast the ball clear from the back because it, we're in a situation where... I find it so difficult to win the ball back off opposition sides and because of my inherent want to play possession football, in instinct to play possession football, it's been a really tough transition for me to ever really make to just hoof it and get rid. I will try and do what I can to ensure we get the results that we need and a clean seat like we got against Watford will go a long way to doing so. But we need to get a clean sheet again against Plymouth now away from home. The league table sees us level on points with Birmingham City. And because they lost so heavily to West Brom, goal difference is now only six, not ten as it previously was. The more we win, the more they lose, the better chance we stand. Ipswich have a game in hand at the moment, which is at home against Everton, which surely they will lose which will see them just four points above us with six to play for. We have to hope. We have to hope. Nottingham Forest are up and are champions. Everton will be... Everton are up as well. Everton are guaranteed automatic promotion. West Brom cannot catch them. We move and we go down south to Plymouth. Plymouth are also playing a five at the back. Whitaker on the right-hand side is obviously going to be very, very strong. Randall in the middle is a great player. 
Barley Mumber at left wing back will get forward and have plenty to say offensively as well as defensively. Mike Cooper in goal is very strong. They've only won once in the last four, but they've only lost once in the last five. They were in the relegation picture and with some really strong mid-season form have pulled themselves well away from that relegation zone, Plymouth. We're going to have to go to home park. And we're going to have to perform again, expecting Plymouth to be quite defensive initially to just try and get a foothold in the game. Despite being the home side, they know how much we're going to try and put the pressure on. So they're going to try and ride the initial waves of attack. As Yengi's in here, he needs support. Here it is. Ben Osborne trying to find the space. And there is none. None whatsoever. Too many. Boys in green and gold back there. Argyle fans are very loud at home park. They get great attendances, mainly because they're only the real side. or well, the only side of... Uh, note in the area obviously Exeter and Torquay down there too Exeter a league one and league two side and Torquay significantly non-league at the moment here's Morgan Whitaker trying to find some space gets the shot away and Jack Stevens makes a very good save I think that basically sums up how I feel right now my insides are doing the exact same thing as my mouth just did here's Gibson Kellen Watts trying to get in the way no dangled legs please lads Dodds trying to get rid of it and that's where anywhere will do the, from the previous comments section looking for Balajizi Cassini's making the run Cassini Yengi in the box keeper's come keeper makes a great save Cassini Yengi's header goes nowhere near the goal despite him being the one that won it big save by Mike Cooper I'm trying to get a friggin left back if it'll actually let me change player to in Christ alive give me that back again well it's an excellent slide tackle it hasn't quite worked in getting me the ball back again but Charlie Goods won it back and Marcus Brown will win it back. We'll use the keeper and we'll just get rid of it. Oh, Cusini. That's a great chance, mate. Right thing to do to try and lob the goalkeeper in that situation. He was rushing out at me. He just couldn't quite find the finish he needed. Osborne's touch is good. Valagisi through that gap again. Can we replicate the previous move? Not really. There's not much, enough space to do it. Jack McKenzie tucking it back. Cusini Yengi. Valagisi's here. Valagisi. Valagisi still. Take your time. Don't lose it. Don't rush it. Looking for Dodds. Who's on side? Dodds. Pass Barley Mumba. Dodds. Into the middle. Kusini Yengi over the bar. Imagine if we stay up because of an overhead kick like that. Looking for Brown. Finding Yengi. Yengi's going to hold on to it. Yengi still. Need to get the ball into the box. Need to get the ball into the box. McKenzie does just that. Oh, and it nearly finds Balajizi, but won't. It'll be nil-nil at half-time. Got to be careful with Brown now. As much as we want to press, I cannot afford to have a man get sent off. Can't afford to go bloody goal down either. Which is exactly what's happened. The fortune for it to fall back to him is one thing. But the finish is something else entirely. Plymouth have done dick all offensively all game and then they pull that out of the hat is that the goal that relegates us brilliant block by Kellen Watts under control and then let's fly keeper no chance Plymouth 1 Cambridge nil. into Kellen Watts Brown does get to that it was a bit of an ambitious ball I mean, oh, what an interception. But we do need to be ambitious right now. Oh, please. Balotisi, find that pass. Dodsey's clean through. That was Foden. In the Euro semi-final-esque with the through ball. Oh, not semi-final. It was the... Was it the semi-final? It was the semi-final where Foden went through and nearly scored in a situation like that, putting it through the goalkeeper's legs and it got cleared off the line. Out to Sorinola here. Sorinola forward. Sorinola tries to play the pass and balls it up, but still, here come Plymouth. On the, in the first half, they were nothing but defence. In the second half, they've been nothing but attack. So far, we've had nothing in terms of goals for us. And Wayne has made it too. Yikes. Quality of finish, though, from their striker has been out of this world. Under pressure as well. And he scooped that into the top corner. Like, Kellen Watts is on his shoulder. And that is a sensational goal. We have to hope that Birmingham have lost as well. 
Sorinola. Rafferty's trying to get back here. Can't get there. Wayne. And Randall. And Wright. And Wayne again. Stevens with a fingertip save. Wayne has nearly scored a hat trick of worldy goals in this game. He's had seven shots, two of which have flown into the back of the net and have been absolutely unstoppable for the goalkeeper on both occasions. There is absolutely nothing Jack Stevens could have done against any of them. And I tackled him there and he just ran off for the ball again. It's 3-0 Plymouth. It really is game over. It'll be a 3-0 defeat at home park, just as we were delighted at Birmingham City's 3-0 defeat in the last game. They'll be thrilled at ours here. We have to hope that they lost again. And then it goes to the final day. If Birmingham... Oh, oh, I just I don't know what to feel, how to think. No sign of a Birmingham result there. Charlton lose. Should have looked for Ipswich as well, really, but we can't catch Ipswich now. It's literally us, Huddersfield or Birmingham. Sermons has been fine. Thank and you so is no need to overreact. We head to the game against Hull on the final match day, not knowing at this exact moment in time what our future holds. Our second press conference question comes from Matt Profit that says, if Silla is a successful in his loan spell, would you be willing to bring him back in either a season-long loan or permanent deal next season as you've not gelled with Reyes Cleary? If not, would you be looking to replace Cleary or even Yengi as your striker slash backup striker? Yengi's going nowhere. Cleary has improved once more out on loan, so we'll get the opportunity next year. Still has been good, better than Cleary was, but I don't know as Still has made enough of an impact to warrant us thinking about bringing him in permanently. We had much better performances out of Gasana Hadme in season one and didn't bring him back, so I don't think we'll bring Silla back. But he has played his part this year. Birmingham have played and they lost. It goes to the final day. Huddersfield are certainly down. They can get above me on goal difference if they win and we lose. And, but if they win, oh, they need to turn over an eight goal differential on the final day. We have Hull City at home. Hull City sit 11th. Birmingham have Norwich City away. Norwich are in 7th and with a chance of getting into the playoffs... They are our senior affiliates club, Norwich City. We need them to do us more than just loan us players. They need to get a win at Cowra Road. We need to, at home, do what we can against Luton. Everton have won the... Sorry, Everton are in second, up. Forrest are in first and have won the league with 106, maybe even 109 points. West Brom are in the playoffs. Luton are in the playoffs. Southampton in fifth can be usurped by Norwich if Southampton lose and Norwich win. Middlesbrough can also fall out of the playoffs, but it is two spots for three teams in the playoffs. It's two spots for three teams at the bottom as well. How is this one going to go then? Your final match day against Hull City at home against or in front of the Abbey Stadium. They have lost their last two games. Javen Filagy now on the left hand side will be the danger man. Barry up top, apparently 75 rated. FML. Ashby at the back is a player that may well be related to Ian Ashby, who's a, a player that was at Cambridge United and was sold to Hull City talking 20 years ago. And Patreon player Joe Wayant starts at right back. If you relegate me, Joe, I will hunt you down. Or the game fighting relegation. The game knows what's up. Oh, yikes. Talk about building the tension. Sweet Jesus. Because of Hull's home and away kits, both sides having to play in their away kits here, otherwise there would be a kit clash. All we need to do is beat Birmingham's result. If they lose, we can draw. If they draw, we'll need the win. We just need to beat their result. Scoreline is irrelevant. We just need to beat their result. I need to get this done. We'll keep our eyes peeled for updates on the Birmingham Norwich City game. We are putting our faith in our senior affiliates that they will do the job we need them to do on this final day. They need the job done as well to get a spot in the playoffs. Take things slow. Take things calm. 
Ah, and hopefully get the result we need. That would have been an unbelievable start if the ball had found its way through. Jaden Filagini is going to be a real pain in the backside, but hopefully we can cope with him. It's Lakilo. I've got something on that. Joe wins it back after losing it initially. Charlie, good. Keep up. And away. Anyway, we'll do. Win that, Marcus. He hasn't. Can he get to the loose ball, though? No. Hold with a spell of pressure. A spell of pressure we need to withstand. Jones to Barry. Well intercepted. And away we go. And actually, at some pace, please. Dodsey's going to make the run. We're going to play him quickly before he gets offside. Dylan Dodds. It's been a bit of a hero for you guys recently in this save. And Kusini Yengi could be our hero here today. The man that fired the goals in that got us to this level may well have just scored the goal to keep us at this level. Dylan Dodds and Kusini Yengi turning up for the team when they need it. It means nothing if Birmingham win at Carra Road. But we're doing our bit so far. We now need Norwich to do theirs. Makilo on the run. Can't get there with Forrest. Barry will turn inside. He's got plenty of white shirts ready to meet him. Here's Jones now. Out to Joe Wayan. Cuts that back. Here's Barry. Getting away from it. I have to be a little bit calmer in my defending. Don't just lunge in, Ches. Got to make sure we keep them out here. I've lunged in. I've taken him out. Follow your own advice, you moron. Penalty hole. That one definitely was a pen. Barry from the spot. Saved! Jack Stevens, the hero again! Two penalty saves in the final few games of the season. That's massive. He got that's an animation I don't think I've ever seen before either. He got down to it and then got back up for it again. Dodds on the breakaway from their own penalty. Oh, Hull City nearly go 2-0 two, two down. Oh, my Christ. I'm so, so lucky. Huddersfield 1, Cardiff 0. Huddersfield are winning. Huddersfield Town are winning. But they are destined to go down, we feel, at the minute. Whether they go down in 22nd or 23rd, we don't know yet. But at the minute, they're at least giving their fans... Some sort of really, 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 really outside hope. Well in Lassa Sørensen. That one was a perfectly well-timed tackle. And anywhere will do for us. Cusini wins the header well. Osborne through to Dodds. Cusini's on the run. We'll look for him. Cusini Yengi behind. It's Dodds and Cusini again. And the shot was about to come in. But it's well blocked by the defender. Is your heart in your mouth? Is your stomach falling out your backside? Good, same. Looking for Sørensen. Looking for Cusini. Oh, Norwich won. Birmingham won. Dembele's just equalised for Norwich. Birmingham had taken the lead at Carra Road. As it stands, as we approach half-time, with it 1-1 at Carra Road and 1-0 here, Cambridge United survive in the Championship for next season. But we all know how quickly that can change. It could even change in the space of this single highlight. Barry in the box, lays it back to Woods, holding it up and tackled by Kirk Henderson. Halfway there. It's away from the runners. That was meant for Brown, but never mind. Touch ball, Forrest. Cusini's in the middle. Oh, so close to two. So close to two. Get in, Charlie. Get stuck in, lad. Jacob inside. Philogene. Man, that's now going to Aston Villa in real life. Could still yet have a major part to play as a whole City player this season. Out wide. Jacob delivers. And McKenzie wins the header. That is vital. If a second goal comes, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Goal difference is not important at this stage. 
playing such a heavy possession based second half Dodds trying to find the space Dodds into the middle Marcus Brown with a header wide of the target Cardiff pull one back against Huddersfield it's 3-1 there now but Huddersfield are down regardless of their result today Omur is on for them for Woods in their midfield 12 minutes to hold on I don't know whether to make substitutions of my own to be honest here comes McKenzie Yengi's with me here's Forrest Yengi's in that gap Yengi has Ben Osborne on the edge of the box oh, his touch is diabolically poor Ben Osborne the one time this season where we needed him to have an excellent first touch and he hasn't had it but we're slowing them up seven minutes to go Jaden Philogy up against Lasse Sørensen Borsen backwards can't press too high because they'll leave space in behind or that will leave space in behind get to that don't rush don't rush Norwich 2 in the 88th minute Norwich 2 Birmingham 2 Norwich City in the 88th minute Birmingham 2 Norwich 2 that last gasp Norwich equaliser might have just saved us. What a huge result that could be. The cross comes in. Alves can't get there. But the final whistle is going to go. Have Norwich done us the favour? Do we stay up? Are we down? The fans are applauding. But there's no, there's no mad scenes. We don't know yet. We still don't know. We've won our game. Birmingham Drew! Cambridge in Southampton FIFA 18 fashion, perhaps even more so than Southampton FIFA 18 fashion, Cambridge United survive in the championship. I genuinely cannot believe it I was certain that we were going down absolutely certain with three games to go we were five points from safety with no games to go we're safe by two points a giant giant effort two one nil wins Two Jack Stevens penalty saves and Cambridge United survive in the championship for another year. That is genuinely outrageous. I, I don't know what to say. Holy balls. If you haven't dropped the video a like, do so right now. If you're not subscribed to the channel, do so right now. If you don't watch the streams live to see that in the moment live with everybody that's here follow the link in the description come and follow now episode one of season four will join you tomorrow but there's still a season roundup to do but i need a couple of moments just to calm down if you don't mind one final press conference question comes from Leone that says, if relegation does happen, will there need to be budget cuts outside the playing squad? Well, guess what, Leone? Relegation didn't happen. The U's are staying up. Vlacodimos, Doherty, Watts, Kalulu, Diakite, Grant, Barkley, Gibbs, White, Wallace, Banza, McAtee. It is all Nottingham Forest, Luton Town, Everton and West Brom and then the big boy Kel Watts at the back for Cambridge United. Remarkable. I have absolutely no way to accurately describe how I felt through that entirety of the final game. The Up until the 88th minute, we were still relegated. Because Norwich were losing. I can't believe it. Right. Let's go and round the season out. Okay, this is exactly what we anticipated happening. What we wanted to happen. Adam Clarkson is going to leave us. 
he quite simply hasn't performed, irregardless of uh, the financial situation of the club. He just wasn't very good. We put 67-rated Marcus Brown out there for the final few games of the season, and he was better. So I'm quite happy to accept a £5.2 million valuation from Fenerbahce. We will negotiate slightly higher, if we can, to add some more funds to the pot. We've had £8 million. Pounds. A sell-on clause of 1%. 1%! Cheeky bastards! 1%! Give me 10%. 1%! I'm tempted to reject just for that. I'll accept. We want Clarkson gone. We want the money. We will be upgrading the ground in between seasons. Norwich have come in for Liam Lee. We don't rate him. He's... Oh, I'm torn as to what to do with it. Norwich are a club that would surely... He would want to go to regardless of what we did in our season. He dropped out of our starting lineup. We'll have a look and see what players Norwich have in their current cam roll, but I'm pretty sure Liam Lee would want to leave us to go there. Uh, at cam, they have no cams. They have no cams. They have wide players that are decent, but no cams. Live chat will get the call on this. Chat, do we sell Liam Lee to Norwich or do we reject that bid and wait for potentially a different club to come in for him or wait till next season till making a decision. Uh, literally everybody other than one person has said sell. That's about 10 sells and one, one keep. All right, uh, Liam Lee is on his way to Norwich City. We're gonna have a decent amount of money to spend next year to hopefully take this squad onto the next level. I'm just gonna accept the 1.4. I'm not gonna make much difference in that 1.4 and it looks like he will leave us. Lee sold. He's decided to go. He has gone. Liam Lee to Norwich City for £1.4 million is a done deal. And Adam Clarkson sold to Fenerbahce for £5.2 million. We will have significant funding for an upgrade to the ground. We got £8.4 million prize money. We've just made another Six and a half ish from player sales. The current bank balance reads 33.1 million pounds. Weirdly, that's bugged. It might just be because it doesn't fit. It is. So, we are going to have a significant improvement to our ground for next season. So, a full season roundup then of the season that blew everybody's minds. With regards to player stats for the current division we were in, actually, no, let's start with competitions we were involved in to see who ended up going up in the end in the playoffs, etc. Birmingham go down. Cambridge are championship next season, but rather evidently, we are going to need significant improvement to stay at this level. Norwich, despite with their draw on the final day, if they'd have won, they would have been in the playoffs, but they were not. So it's Southampton and Middlesbrough that are in the playoffs for the championship this season. The FA Cup was won, bloody hell. The FA Cup was won by Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough in the playoffs may well end up being a championship side with European football. Middlesbrough three, Chelsea one. What an unbelievable turn up. Man City four, Man United two in the Carabao Cup. In the championship playoffs, West Brom are up. So Middlesbrough are a championship side with European football. Fair bloody play. Liverpool won the European Super Cup. The Champions League this year was won by Barcelona by one goal to nil over Dortmund. The Europa League this year was won by Osasuna on penalties over Leipzig. So the Spanish side's running riot in Europe, but it was the French side of Lille that got the better of Roma in the Europa League final this time around. And in the World Cup, England currently top their group. Italy top theirs, France top theirs, Croatia and Netherlands are drawing at the top of theirs, Spain top theirs, Germany top theirs, and that's how the World Cup stands right now. I will try and get the World Cup results to you uh, at the beginning of the next season, but don't quote me on it if I forget, because I forgot with the Euros last time, by the time I remembered it had gone. Top goal scorer in the championship with 34 goals in 45 games. Banza. Unbelievable player. 
Barkley with 23 at Luton. Gibbs White with 20 at Nottingham Forest. Forest and, uh, and Everton, the ones that went up. Luton, still in this division next season. Our top goal scorer, Kusini Yengi, because of course it was 14 goals in 43 games for Kusini this season. And he's the only one of our players on that list. Assist-wise, creative. What a season by Ross Barkley. 23 goals, 12 assists. Unreal. Ridiculous season for Ross Barkley. That's outrageous. To be fair, Kusini Yingi is our most creative player as well. Look, with seven assists in 43 games. There is Ben Osborne there with six. So Osborne in the list or on the list. And Jack Stevens with nine clean sheets in 34 games. Two of which came today. Those two kept us in the division. Jack Stevens, I think, has to keep the number one spot, doesn't he? I don't... Wow, Fleming got sent off three times for Millwall. GG, mate. I can't really argue against it, can I? With regards to other leagues, before we have a look at our own squad, in the Premier League, Manchester City win by five points from Chelsea, Liverpool and Arsenal. Aston Villa in fifth, Man United only sixth, Spurs only eighth. Relegated and playing us next season will be Coventry City, who rather evidently weren't cut out for that level. Bournemouth and Leeds United. They will come back down to the Championship and we will play them next year. We will also be playing Peterborough United and Queen's Park Rangers as they get promoted. Blackpool, Sheffield Wednesday, Bolton and Oxford will fight it out in the playoffs to continue their rise through the divisions. Relegated from League One. Back down to League 2 for Grimsby, Leighton Orient, Bradford and Shrewsbury. And in League 2, promoted are MK Dons, Gillingham and Forest Green back up to League 1 level. Cheltenham, Exeter, Burton Albion and Tranmere Rovers will fight it out for a spot in the playoffs. And Harrogate and Wimbledon would have been knocked back down to non-league if non-league were in the game, which I continually don't believe it ever will be. Stade René win the league in France. A couple of our Patreon players are at Stade René. Champions League football for you boys. Lille win the Europa Conference League, but finishing a Champions League spot in Liga. So congratulations to them. In the Bundesliga, Dortmund by a point from Bayern, by a point from Leverkusen. Leipzig loses in a European Cup final. Fourth only here. And our previous side, Union Berlin, in fifth. In Serie A. AC Milan by three points from Juventus, from Inter by a further point, from Atalanta by a further point, and Napoli and Lazio miss out on Champions League football equally by a point. Very, very tight in Serie A. Six points separating first and sixth. Roma only seventh there. In the Eredivisie, Feyenoord win on goal difference ahead of PSV. Ajax three points further back. In the Portuguese league, it's Benfica from Sporting. Sorry, Benfica from Porto, Sporting a long way further back. With 69 points only in Scotland. It's Celtic from Hearts. Rangers only third in La Liga. Atleti from Real Barcelona only third. And Atleti with a very strong season in that regard. And with regards to what the board wanted from me this year. Which isn't really that relevant. Because we have ourselves set as unsackable. Because the game can screw you over sometimes. But I think we ticked quite a lot this year. Uh, we've done that we've done that we've done that we've done both of those we haven't yet achieved a mid-table position but we have two more seasons remaining to do so and that is the plan next year we're not anticipating going for a promotion bid next year although we do have the finances perhaps to do so maybe but we are planning on spending a lot of money on the ground first before we massively improve the playing squad to keep things a bit more realistic and to slow down the progress. Two years in League One, two years in the Championship Premier League is probably a little bit too fast to progress in. We could still do it with the improvements we make in the summer, but my anticipation is that I'd like to spend money on the ground first, but we'll see what happens with regards to uh, our league position at the end of Season 4. With regards our squad in season three then we've got a lot of players that will be leaving us at the end of this season those that came in and did a job those that have for one year those that have been with us for a little bit longer and those that were in on loan we're going to see a massive changeover in the number of players in the squad to start the new season statistically yengi our top goal scorer but only with 14 he got 14 goals in 20 league one games it took 43 league uh, championship games to get the same amount of uh, 
of goals and he was the only one to reach double figures for us but it was one of those kind of seasons wasn't it It was the most creative player as well Ben Osborne with six assists came in and did an absolute belting job in that central midfield role very very pleased with Ben Osborne Kirk Henderson keeps the starting sorry keeps the captain's armband though but with regards uh, player growth and overall uh, ability Ingram's going to leave us Stevens still submitted a transfer request I have taken him off the transfer list with regards to the editor, but it still keeps him on the transfer list. So I'm going to try and keep my fingers crossed that as we move into a new season. It will take him off the transfer list, but I don't think it will. Bourne has come back from his loan at Wrexham and has one year left on his contract. As things stand, Stephen's starting goalkeeper, who we anticipate will not be uh, peaked next year and will continue to grow. And Bourne will be back up, I think. Osborne is obviously a central midfielder for us, but he's grown up 1 to 72. Anderson up 2. He wants a new contract. He's only just come up to the first team. I don't think he really warrants a new contract at this stage, but we might spend some money and give him one. Kingsley's going to leave us. Rock solid for us when he played. Didn't play in the final few games, though, at your request. Charlie Good came in and did do a job for us. Pleased with his contribution. Kelland Watts made team of the season. That's how good he was for us this year. Up 3 to 71. We don't know yet who's going to show interest in our players in the summer. We shall wait and see. Zeno is going to leave us. Mackenzie will stay and we will probably give him a contract extension as well because he was very good. Not yet peaked and still with room to grow. Job leaves us, unfortunately for him. Rafferty was great for us last year. Sorensen improved this year, but Rafferty is going to Germany, so a great move for him at this stage of his career. Sorensen will obviously continue on. Jordan Cousins is going to leave us, and Keeley goes back to Bayern Munich. Kirk Henderson remains our captain, and because he was one of the award winners last year, he's allowed that growth by four this season. Marcus Brown is up to 68 now and peaked, but might well have earned himself a contract extension for another year based on his performances this season. Clarkson is obviously going to leave us. Luke Berry is going to leave us. He's very much in decline now, thanks to his drop from the first team. And it was that initial decline that saw his performances drop that made he went out of the first team in the first place. Balajizi obviously lost his first team spot thanks to an injury. Got it back, didn't have the same impact. I'm not sure what to do with Balajizi next year. George Thomas, we will move to Plymouth at the beginning of season four because that's what happened he signed a pre-contract but the game moved him too early but we'll move him at the beginning of the next season when Elvis came in he was all right he was all right that's all I can say Liam Lee's obviously leaving us now and going to Norwich the stats read that he was one of our highest goal scorers and highest assist getters but we know that we can do better than Liam Lee we know that he disappointed in key areas in key moments James Brophy will not get a contract extension but uh will keep his position at the club Semmer just wasn't unfortunately what we needed when we needed it dodsey has been superb he's up three this year he will probably almost certainly get a contract extension although he's very happy with his current contract so whilst he's happy with his current contract we might just leave it alone and spend the money elsewhere sam forrest grew by eight this year that was out of our control with a loan spell uh He's unhappy with his contract. He will get a new one. Kusini Yenki up by two. He's peaked now, but expects that to remove itself for next year. Obviously, Kusini will be our starting striker next year. Cleary is now 72. Annoyed that he grew by four, not by the three that he was previously at. But that's out of my control with a loan spell. Cleary is going to get another chance to stake his claim at the, at the club for starting striker. Dyer's come in and he's going to go out on loan. He's come up from the youth squad. He's going to go out on loan to Levante next year for a year and hopefully will grow very well. But at the beginning of next season, it will be Yengi and Cleary again. Silla came in, scored one goal in the league. It was a very important goal at the time and got two goals on debut in the FA Cup. Just couldn't quite do it at championship level, but did more than, um, did more than Cleary did in the championship for me in those 11 games so I'm quite happy with that that's absolutely fine so that's where the that's where the league sits right now or the squad sits right now should I say with regards to Patreon players I'll give you a quick rundown of uh, all of your overalls here we will of course update the spreadsheet at the beginning of the new season with regards to your overalls and at the end of the transfer window with regards to any moves Liam Bennett's still on the shortlist 
Still first team for Norwich. I don't feel like we're in a position to bring him back to the club yet. So we won't at this stage. I've got a couple of players on my shortlist that we might still go for. Maybe re-spend it. We might look for someone slightly better. I am particularly keen on uh, on bringing... Where are you? Well, Pack is a player I'd love to bring in and utilise in the short term. He hasn't played every week for Birmingham. I could check his stats and see how many games he played for this year. Well, I mean, they got relegated, so it makes perfect sense for us to go and get Pack. But only if we have someone that's 74 rated. Clarkson will leave us in between season three and season four. So I think our highest rated player will be 72. I mean, the pack is still unavailable for us. Uh, Jensen Weir would probably be the player that we go for in that centre mid spot. 72, years of, 72 rated at 24 years of age, should I say. Uh, we also have a player that has signed for Cambridge on loan from QPR in real life. Taylor Richards that we will probably look to loan in in save as well. Looks like he could genuinely add something to the squad. So that makes perfect sense. And actually nice to see a player that came with sign IRL at this stage that we're still able to get into the fold. Obviously, uh, the remaining of you guys here on the uh, on the shortlist. With regards to your Patreon growth and moves, etc. We expect more moves in the summer window. And we're not going to do anything with Don Ballard. He's just gone to... Uh, Athletic, uh, and Alec, sorry, and we're quite happy with the starting strikers that we have. So, thus ends a remarkable season finale and a remarkable season. That year will go down probably in folklore on the channel the same way that um, the Southampton first season did on FIFA 18 with regards to that relegation avoidance. That was genuinely unbelievable. How we I think that is probably an even bigger turnaround and a bigger upset and a bigger shock to survive here than we did than when we did it with Southampton. That is all for this third season. Join me tomorrow for episode one of season four. We'll also have slightly before episode one of season four goes live the uh, player award ceremony for season three. But that is all for full episodes of season three. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to need your help for season four. There's going to be a lot happening. I'll see you then.